Today I going to recapture a sci-fi action movie from 2022 titled Prey, spoilers ahead, watch out and be warned. In 1719 in the northern Great Plains young Comanche Naru goes herb collecting with her dog Sari. But when nobody is watching she used the opportunity to leave the group behind to practice her axe throwing against a tree. There she discovers some paw prints on the ground and follows them to find a white-tailed deer that she chooses to hunt. The idea is to sneak around and startle attack but the sound of a rumble in the sky frightens the animal away. Naru and Sari pursue it and Naru tosses her axe at it but she fails and the axe ends up punched on a tree instead. While she reclaims it Sari maintains going and accidentally gets his tail caught in a bear trap. Disregarding about the deer Naru hurries to release her dog and take care of his tail with some healing herbs. She also examines the trap because she's never noticed something like this before, but she's hindered by the sky rumbling again. When she looks up she sees a strange shape falling, and she thinks it to be the legendary Thunderbird. Believing this is an indication to finally initiate her rite of passage, Naru leaves to see her brother Tabi to inquire him to take her with his party next time he goes hunting, and while he's uncertain, he approves. Then Naru went back to the tribe to drop off the herbs she's collected. While preparing some medicine ready for the chief Naru's mother Ruka curious why her daughter must hunt when she's great at multiple other things, so Naru clarifies it's because they all think she can't. Meanwhile, it's disclosed that the rumble from the sky precisely is the property of to a spaceship that drops an alien known as Predator on Earth. He's tough and fast and his technology shows up with camouflage that makes him invisible plus heat vision goggles. Back to Naru she went back to the forest to gather up some orange flowers her mother wants and save some for herself in her bag. When she came back to the tribe she discovers a mountain lion has taken one of their men and a hunting group is leaving to find them, Naru go after them intending to join them but few of the men don't need her there because she wasn't taught to hunt like them, Tabi comes in her protection explaining she's nice at tracking and medicine so she's permitted to join them because she may be helpful. Predator is in the region too busy killing a snake. Following the tracks left by the mountain lion the hunting team finally finds their wounded friend Puhi. The hunters construct a stretcher while Naru takes care of the Puhi's wounds, involving feeding him some of the orange flowers which will stimulate his blood. Now the team is ready to take Puhi back but Tabi stops behind to locate the mountain lion. Naru likes to stay with him because she feels there's something else aside the lion, it doesn't make sense for Puhi to be alive signifying something dangerous must have frightened the lion away. Tabi turns her down though and makes her go away. At first Naru goes away with the group as her brother told her to but she stops when she discovers some weird things around her, paw prints too huge to be a bear's, a gently skinned snake, and blood on the top of a tree. She wants to alert Tabi so the team sends Parke with her for protection while the others go back to their clan. The duo finds Tabi and assist him search for the lion by using Naru's plan because Tabi wishes to give her the chance she asked for. While Tabi lays down the bait Naru and Parke climb a tree to wait for the lion and the meeting comes hastily than expected. The lion jumps high enough to drag Parke off the tree and kill him, then it jumps on a branch to go after Naru. She gradually walks back as she attempts to protect herself with a spear but unexpectedly, she gets diverted by the rumble in the sky again. This gives the lion the opportunity to come after her throwing her off the tree and knocking her out. When Naru awakens later she's back in the tribe and Aruka disclosed Tabi dragged her back. Puhi has survived gratitude to her medicine too so Aruka feels Naru should perhaps commit her life to medicine instead of hunting. Their discussion is interrupted when Tabi arrived with the lion's body and attainment for which is respected by the chieftain. Naru still believes there's something more harmful in the woods and needs to go after it but Tabi doesn't allow her. She's already attempted hunting and failed it was only him who brought the lion back. The following morning Naru concludes to ignore and go after the mysterious presence with only Sari as companion. Across the forest she continues finding more evidence of this unknown creature like green blood on trees and more of those big paw prints. Predator is clearly not far away from there this time chasing a wolf in order to get its skull which he tidies to use as a mask. Naru on the other side isn't as fortunate with her hunts. Hitting moving targets isn't as easy as hitting a tree so by the time she reclaims her throwing axe her prey is gone. Fortunately she came up with an idea, she ties some vines to make a rope that she then ties to the axe enabling her to throw it and immediately retrieve it back without losing time, this eventually lets her hunt a ton of rabbits to feed herself and the dog. After much walking Naru comes across a flock of skinned bison with some bullets on the ground around them. Nevertheless, she doesn't recognize what bullets are and feels the mysterious creature did this. When she vacates the area, she accidentally steps into quicksand. Thankfully she however has her axe with her so she throws it at a tree and once it manages to get appropriately stuck, she manages the rope to pull herself out. However Predator comes across the bison too which notifies him there are dangerous hunters in the area. Back to Naru, after cleaning up in the river, she comes across a grizzly bear that she plans to hunt. Unfortunately, her bow breaks, giving the bear the opportunity to come after her. 
Sari jumps in to divert the beast, giving Naru chance to jump in the river and hide under a beaver dam. The bear comes towards her again, trying to demolish the dam, but unexpectedly it's pulled back by Predator. Thanks to the bear bleeding on him, Naru eventually gets to see the alien and spends no time in jumping back into the river to swim away. Predator notices her but lets her go because he doesn't find her harmful. After returning to the woods, Naru comes across a search group, Tabi impelled to find her while he looks around the other side of the river. They don't trust Naru's story because such a monster wouldn't let her free so easily, and when Naru attempts to leave, Wazape jumps on her to stop her. Naru battles fiercely but Wazape still wins, binding her up to drag with the group toward camp. Nevertheless, they wait when they hear some weird sounds and red lights appear on Wasapi's chest. Dwelling invisible among the trees, Predator shoots and kills Wazape, and when he comes closer to reclaim his darts, the other hunters manage to strike him with an arrow. This causes the camouflage cloak to malfunction and disclose Predator to the bear eye. The group jump in to fight him, but Predator is no fit for them and kills them easily. While he's preoccupied fighting, Naru moves toward Wasapi's body to reclaim her things and cut off the rope, allowing her to flee away. When she makes it to an open field, Naru comes across a hunter that had surveyed ahead. He wants to battle back, but soon the red light comes on his body too. Realizing what they mean now, Naru starts running away as Predator jumps on and slaughters her fellow tribesmen. She's so concentrated on putting her eyes on the enemy that she doesn't notice a bear trap on the ground and gets her leg caught in it. Predator comes after her, pondering his options, but he unexpectedly runs away when he discovers a group of French traders coming to see who got into their trap. The traders bang Naru out and when she wakes up later, she discovers herself in a cage at their camp. Sari has come looking for her, but he's captured and tied up as well. All the traders are wearing furs, and Naru discovers they were the ones that killed the bison. One of the men, named Raphael, understands how to speak with her and asks her for a report on Predator, who he thinks is a hunter looking for the toughest opponent. Naru tells them nothing, causing the traders to decide to disclose they've also caught Tabi and now they are injuring him to make him smell of blood. Then, Tabi and Naru are bound to a tree as prey to entice Predator so the traders can shoot him from their covering spots. However, the traders didn't take into consideration Predator's camouflage, and he approaches them without them knowing to begin killing them one after the other. Tabi troubles when he hears the screaming, but Naru disclosed to him that Predator doesn't want bait because he hunts oppositely, and he's always let her free because he doesn't deem her a threat. To make her feel good about her hunting capacities, Tabi confesses he only managed to slay the lion because he had obeyed Naru's plan, so she did do something back then. Their discussion is interrupted when Predator screams in anger as his leg gets captured in a bear trap. The French traders instantly go after him, but Predator shortly recovers and after flinging the trap away, he starts killing them with a mixture of advanced weapons and a shield that protects him from their bullets. The toss trap lands near the tree, enabling Naru to use it to snip the rope. Now free, Tabi goes to find some horses and Naru goes to release Ari while Predator takes out most of the surviving men with a grenade. At the French camp, the traders are picking up their things to leave, and they plan to kill Sari. Naru jumps in to battle them and kill them all, and once she saves her dog, she sends him to find Tabi. Then she starts applying herbs to her wounds, and that's how Raphael locate her. He's losing a leg, so he requests for a deal, he'll give her his flintlock pistol and train her how to use it in trade for medicine. Naru approves and shares her orange flowers with him, she also gets to hold the piece of alien technology she finds on his leg. Meanwhile, Predator is taking care of his own wounds, before going to the camp as well. Naru hears him entering and instantly hides while Raphael acted to be dead. Thanks to the orange flowers chilling his blood, the trick totally works for, and Predator can't see it until he mistakenly steps on Raphael, making him yell. Predator instantly kills him as Sari shows up to strike, but before the dog can be shot, Tabi shows up too, riding a horse. He manages to hit Predator on the head one time, and by riding fastly in circles he can swerve the alien's shots. After failing to use the pistol correctly, Naru yells at Predator to divert him, allowing Tabi to jump off the horse and land a strike on him. Now Predator and Tabi battle hand to hand, and since Tabi is such a better warrior, Predator determines to put on his camouflage to achieve an advantage. He attacks Tabi from behind to kill him, but Tabi doesn't give up and clutches onto Predator's leg to provide Naru time to run away. Back in the tribe, another search group returns to give Aruka terrible news, they couldn't locate her children. Aruka cries for them, at the same time Naru reaches the river, and cleaning up while crying over her brother's death. Sari finds her and lets her be aware of a French man still in the area, so Naru made use the alien weapon he took from Raphael to knock this man off. When he awakes later, the man discovers himself in a camp where Naru is readying herself to hunt Predator. She's painted her face and eaten some of the orange flowers to cool her blood, she's also let the French man to keep his pistol, although it's empty. However, his clamor and attract Predator, who discovers the armed trader as a threat and gets closer to kill him. 
He totally ignores Naru because he can't see her, so Naru takes the opportunity to shoot him from behind. A pistol isn't suitable to kill him, but it makes him drop the mask, which Naru snatched before running away, further to the area where she set a trap. Predator traces a trail of blood that Naru left behind on reason, and when he comes nearer, Naru jumps on him to battle him hand to hand. After bartering a few blows and protecting herself from his defense by hiding among rocks, Naru commands Sari to run by as a distraction and manages to push Predator into the quicksand she had fallen into before. This is honestly not enough to kill him, but Naru is prepared, when Predator resurfaces and shoots, Naru instantly moves away, and letting the projectile hit the mask she left there before. This pushes the projectile rebound and kills Predator instead. The following morning, Naru went to the tribe with Predator's head and the pistol, which is disclosed to be Harrigan's weapon from another Predator story. Naru cautions her tribe they need to leave, before the white men arrive for them, but first, everyone honors her hunt the exact way they had done for Tabi. Unfamiliar to them, several Predator ships are about to land on Earth. This brings us to the end of the movie I hope you like it, and please do subscribe to this channel for more videos like that, as we bring you more of your favorite movies, thanks for watching and see you soon.